have a number for the verbs, and that number is singular. God plural created singular the heavens and the earth. So what is it? Is God plural or is God singular? Yes, God is plural, God is singular. See, without developing it here in Genesis 1-1, we already have the seeds of that doctrine of the Trinity, which is most fully shown to us in the pages of our New Testament. In fact, look at verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Well, who's God talking to? He can't be talking to the angels because the angels didn't create the world. He had to have been referring to himself, but he refers to himself in the plural. Let us. So here we have in germ form that beautiful, wonderful doctrine that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One eternal God who exists in three different persons, who work together not, in, not only in creation, but also in providence and in the work of redemption. In the work of redemption, God plans what he will do. The Son executes the Father's plan. And then the Holy Spirit applies the work of Jesus Christ to the heart and life of God's people. So we know for a fact that Jesus Christ was somehow involved in this work of creation because God says, let us, Father, Son, and Spirit, make man in our image. Now if that's true, wouldn't we expect to have something in the New Testament point us in that same direction? That Jesus was one of the persons involved in creation. Well, in fact, we do. Go over to John chapter 1. And all he's got the scriptures right there for you. John chapter 1. John 1 verses 1 to 14 are talking about Jesus Christ. You can tell that from reading verse 14 where it says that the word became flesh. And verses 1 to 13 are talking about the word. The word became flesh. That means the eternal word, Jesus Christ, assumed a human nature and became a man, became a human being. Well, verse 3 says, all things came into being through him. And apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. Through Jesus, all things came into being. Now look at verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. That's an astounding statement. Here Jesus appears on the scene. John, the author of this gospel, says, The world was made through that man that walked the earth 2,000 years ago. But the world didn't recognize him. Didn't know who he was. God incarnate was walking around incognito almost as though he had a disguise on or a mask. His human flesh disguised the real being within that human flesh. Remember on the Mount of Transfiguration when it says Jesus' face shone like the glory of the sun? You know what's happening? The true identity of the one within this veil of flesh was shining forth so they could see who it was. The eternal God was put on display. So what we're saying here is that this one who walked the earth and this one who died on Calvary's cross is creator God. He's the creator. And this isn't the only place that says it. Go over to Colossians 1. Or just look up on the, the wall there. Colossians 1, verse 16. In fact, this is your memory verse for this week. For those of you who want to take up the challenge of memorizing this verse. For by him... That is Christ. We know that from earlier. He's the one who rescued us from the domain of darkness. If you just go back a few verses, you find out he's talking about Jesus. For by Jesus all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. So we're talking here about angels, whether that's demons or holy angels, they were all created through Jesus Christ. Whether you talk about things that are invisible or visible, now a lot of things are invisible to us, right? There's a lot of living organisms that we have to get put under a microscope to be able to see. Everything, whether you can see it or not, Jesus is the one who actually brought those things into existence. 
Satan himself is not an equal with Jesus. Jesus made Lucifer, who, who became Satan, the devil. And then also in the book of Hebrews, we find more information. Hebrews chapter 1. Verse 1. God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these last days has spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. Through whom the Father made the world. So God was working with his Son, and the Spirit was working alongside the Father and the Son. Together, these three persons were involved in the creation of the world. Look at verse 10. And again, verse 10 is talking about Christ. And you, Lord, or you, Lord Jesus, we could say, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. So the very first glimpse we have of Jesus Christ in the book of Genesis is as the creator, the creator of this world. I want to seek to draw a parallel between what we see here in the first three verses of Genesis chapter 1, the first creation, with what we find Jesus doing in the new creation. The first creation is the actual physical creation of the heavens and the earth. But verses 1 to 3 parallel beautifully the spiritual work of recreation that takes place when someone is born again. I want, to see, I want you to see Jesus not only as the creator of the physical world, but of the spiritual dimension of new birth as well. Jesus is involved in both of those. Number one. We find out in verse 2 that the earth was formless, void, and dark. And the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. Well now, take your Bibles and go over to Ephesians chapter 4. And let's look at what the Apostle Paul says about the state of the sinner's heart. Ephesians 4, 17. So this I say and affirm together with the Lord that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles also walk in the futility of their mind, being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. And they, having become callous, have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. Now notice that. If you're here today and you're not a Christian, You've never been born again. This is the state of your own soul. Your mind is futile. Your understanding is darkened. You're excluded from God's life. And that exclusion comes because of ignorance. Ignorance of God. And ignorance of your own sin that is in you. Your heart is hard. Your heart has become calloused and you've given yourself to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. Your heart mirrors the chaotic and confused and darkened condition that the world was in here in Genesis 1-2. Secondly, we find the Spirit of God moving over this chaotic, darkened planet, verse 2. And the Spirit of God was moving or hovering or fluttering it's, it's the word that's used of a hen that kind of flutters her wings over her chicks. She was brooding. So the Spirit of God was working in this chaotic condition, bringing order and life and beauty and symmetry out of a darkened, chaotic place. And my friends, that's exactly what must happen if you were to go from spiritual death to spiritual life. The Spirit of God's got to start moving. Could the earth simply say, you know, I think I'm just going to become light. I I think I'm just going to have some light around here and I'm going to change my void and my um, formless condition into something beautiful and harmonious and symmetrical. The earth had no power to do anything until a power outside of it came into it and changed things. And that's what the Spirit of God must do 
for a sinner 